organizations and was established. The failure of the American Federation, Federation of Labor to organize the workers in the mass production industries led to a confrontation on this matter between the international unions who were structured on an industrial union basis and the Craft Union Internationals at the AFL Convention in 1935. Some 10 internationals were subsequently expelled from the AFL. The United Mine Workers, the Amalgamated Clothing Workers, the Oil Workers International Union, and other industrial union internationals gave leadership to the establishment of the CIO. John L. Lewis was elected its first president at the founding convention of the CIO held in 1936. Between the period from the first convention of District 50 in 1936 and 1942, it became evident that no realistic autonomy existed in the structure and operation of District 50. Many actions and policies were put into effect without the locals or membership being given, being given the opportunity to vote on those matters. John L. Lewis appointed the officers of District 50, appointed the officers and the District 50 locals had no vote at the United Mine Workers Convention. It must be emphatically pointed out that Jim Nelson and Martin Wagner were not, were not responsible for this state of affairs. As a matter of fact, they had many differences of opinion about the operation of District 50 with John L. Lewis and other officers of the United Mine Workers. Jim Nelson resigned as president of District 50 as a result of illness. Mr. Lewis then appointed Martin Wagner as president. At a later date, he removed Wagner and appointed Orr Gassaway as president of District 50. His daughter, Catherine Lewis, as secretary treasurer, and Charles Fell as vice president. At the same time, Lewis appointed Martin Wagner to the executive board of the United Mine Workers, allegedly to represent District 50. These changes were made only to strengthen Lewis's control over District 50. John L. Lewis designed these changes in order to remove Wagner's contact and influence with District 50 locals. John L. Lewis supported Wendell Wilkie in the 1940 presidential election. There was wide disagreement amongst the CIO affiliates and their membership. Lewis, in a radio broadcast in October 1940, appealed to all CIO members and the public to support Wilkie for president. He directed all employees of the United Mine Workers and of District 50 to support his choice and threatened to resign as president of the CIO if Wilkie was not elected. Franklin D. Roosevelt was elected and, as Lewis had threatened, he resigned as president at the convention of the CIO held in Atlantic City, New Jersey in the latter part of 1940. Philip Murray was then elected president of the CIO. The United Mine Workers at a subsequent date disaffiliated from the CIO. Prior to the disaffiliation, the policy board of the United Mine Workers on May 25, 1942, expelled Philip Murray as president of the as vice president of the United Mine Workers. Martin Wagner, executive board member representing District 50, was the only vote against the expulsion of Philip Murray. Many local unions of District 50 wanted to remain affiliated with the CIO. The intolerable conditions within C District 50 as related to autonomy, the mine workers' withdrawal from CIO, and the expulsion of Philip Murray from the mine workers resulted in a meeting held on June 3, 1942, with District 50 delegates in attendance from various sections of the country. The delegates voted to, rep to, voted to request complete autonomy from the United American Mine Workers, and the request was forwarded to John L. Lewis. After waiting for a full day, no answer was received. The delegates then voted to request a charter from the CIO. This meeting took place in the National Press Club in Washington, D.C. While the charter request was pending, and at that 
same meeting, the delegates voted to to establish the National Council of Gas, Coke, and Chemical Workers. A continuation committee was elected to conduct the affairs of the council until the first constitutional convention could be convened. The continuation committee was composed of the following delegates. Martin Wagner, Chairman. Joseph Applebaum.
loss of members through plant closures resulted. The growth of the United Gas Co. and Chemical Workers can be considered excellent, particularly in view of the many complex problems that arose during that period. Our organizing efforts in Canada were in a turmoil as a result of the then district director who attempted to affiliate our locals to the AFL Chemical Workers. By 1947, the situation in Canada became more stable.
executive board members, local union leaders, and the support of the CIO provided the courage, dedication, and will to overcome the many complex problems during those hectic and turbulent periods. As, the res as a result of the union being more united than it had ever been, our 1950 convention held in Cleveland, Ohio, proceeded to adopt a constructive trade union program embracing organizing, collective bargaining, research, and education. The union was in a better position to effectively move forward in relation to the program. There were, however, differences as to the specific ways and means to implement the program in its total operation. The delegates to the convention and democratic procedure through debate resolved and finalized the mechanics or operation of the broad plan that had been adopted. The success of the program can be attested to by the increase in membership from 1950 to 1952. The research and education activities were broadened and were extremely beneficial in collective bargaining. The educational program provided for a series of classroom schooling for our members. The facilities of several colleges were utilized. The members attending and the local unions were very enthusiastic as to the end result. Some of the schools were of a week's duration, some for a shorter period of time. The schooling program became a continuing part in the operation of our union. All during the period since the inception of our union, great scientific and technological changes were developing. Manufactured gas was supplanted by natural gas. There was a development of atomic energy and a discovery of many new chemicals and their byproducts. In the oil industry, thousands of new chemicals were manufactured from the derivatives of oil. The Oil Workers International Union, who had contracts with many large and small companies in the oil industry, had also organized a number of the petrochemical plants owned by various companies in the oil industry. The overlapping jurisdiction between the gas, coke, and chemical workers and the Oil Workers International Union soon became apparent. Both unions had contracts in many cases and in various locations with plants of the same parent, parent company. In order to present a united front, Boundaries, and etc. that occurred from a conception in 1940. 